And so when we think of something like real estate or something like estate planning, you know, anything financial, people always associate risk. But when we think of risk and life, it's all risky, right? You're not gonna make it out alive. Hi, this is Max Tenen with Remax Fine Properties. Now, you might know me as a real estate agent, but what is the word estate? I mean, we know real estate, but you know, we think houses, property, stuff like that. But what is an estate? Well, today I'm here with Michael Maloney III from Premier. And uh, Michael, tell me a little bit about what estates are and what estate planning is. Thank you for having me on, Max. Well, estate planning is getting all legal documents in place. So we're a document prep program. So we do wills, trusts, powers of attorney, guardian nomination, last wills and testament, uh, getting everything in order for families so that they don't then have to go through a probate uh, process and then have attorneys involved uh, and just be exponentially, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars with attorney fees, court process, and obviously we're grieving so we don't want to have to deal with any extra nonsense. So that's what we help families do is cut out that extra step and have it everything private and internal. So are there any other benefits, you know, besides just being prepared uh, to estate planning that you can think of? So benefits, there aren't necessarily benefits for the creators of the trust, but there are benefits for the beneficiaries or the stuff that you will leave behind for your people that becomes more of asset protection for them. Uh, so if you're, kids were going through litigation or divorce, none of their stuff that's in that trust needs to be taken out. Everything can stay in that trust to then be used as uh, an LLC-like flavor, uh, and they can kick out a K-1 to pay the taxes if they wanted to keep the home and didn't want to sell anything, they wanted to keep kind of the trust alive. So it really is just the game plan for all the financial or physical things that you own and how that plays out, you know, maybe if you're incapacitated, uh, if you happen to pass away, it's just making sure that where your assets go, go to the right place. Yes, and it's all about, you know, when you're doing the trust process, selecting the right people that you trust to do the job for you, not, not because someone lives close or, you know, they're the oldest, so it just makes sense to make them the first successor trustee agent, you want to put the people in place that you know we're going to do a good job and do it fairly and do it in a very nice and timely order. And you hit a key point on the head with incapacitation is the most important aspect of the whole do uh, of the documents. Not everyone wants to skip to death. Well, not everyone dies the first time they try. So with incapacitation, it's important that you get your financial durable power of attorney on file with the custodians that you have your retirement dollars with a, or where you bank. So uh, if you do like Wells Fargo, Chase, uh, Bank of America, the power of attorney needs to be on file so that they know that you have people. And there's two different types. There's immediate and springing. Springing being you need two physician's notes to present to the bank or said custodian to then trigger you into your position, and then immediate being, you can now just do the job right away, you don't need physician's notes, you can do anything. So let me ask you, I know a big thing about this has to do with uh, eliminating debt, or at least a big service that you guys offer. And one thing that I run into a lot is debt to income, because that is a big qualifying uh, you know, point for any type of mortgage. Uh, and just a lot of lending instruments in general. So in terms of reducing debt to make sure that you get to that debt to income to allow you to do the things you wanna do, uh, do, do you have any thoughts on that? Like how does that work uh, in a position like yeah, yours? Yeah, definitely. So another service that we offer on our, fin our financial side of the business, we've also been financial advisors, uh, 30 years in experience with my, my father, Mike Maloney Jr. Uh, it's called debt elimination. So the whole process behind it is you're funneling whole cash value life insurance. You're funneling as much money into it as possible to then pay off all your debt on average in nine years or less. Uh, the way it works, you take your smallest debt, you take the minimum payment, whatever you were paying, you funnel as much cash in there, 
once all the cash is built up to pay off all the debt at once, you pay it all off, then you funnel whatever that minimum payment is and you pour it back into the next payment and then you funnel more money into the policy. Once it's full again and you can pay the debt off all at once, you then pay off all that debt and then so on and so forth. And then there's also other benefits to the whole life, the debt elimination. It's got a uh, living benefits in it. So if you were to lose two of the six activities of daily living, so if you couldn't eat, uh, clothe yourself, bathe yourself, go to the bathroom, you're able to use within a year of the policy being active up to 24% of the death benefit for that person's care until either it's all paid, the death benefit's gone, or until that person then becomes healthy again and they can start doing, becoming, you know, working their lives. And so I know a big part of that is uh, power of attorney. Now, you know, I've heard of power of love, but power of attorney is a little out there. Can, can you explain what that is? The financial POA is, you know, the most important one in terms of financial. We need those on file with the custodians, like I said earlier, uh, to make decisions for a loved one if they can't make decisions for themselves. And the financial POA for monetary decision making is a little more uh, strict and strenuous than the healthcare uh, in terms of when we put these on file with these custodians, they have time limits that they want these documents that they're good for. So on the security side of the business where you can lose everything, it's three years of life. And then on the side of the business where you can't lose all your money, it's five years of life. So what we tell our clients is when they do the initial submission, they're gonna be on a recorded line uh, you ask them, will you take this power of attorney for the rest of my life, such and such, and they're going to come back with a no, we want to hold on to it for three years. So you make your notes saying, oh, I spoke with so-and-so on this date at this time, they're going to take it for three years, it's good. So then when you come back for that next check-in, hi, so-and-so, uh, I haven't made any changes to my power of attorney, are you cool to keep it for the rest of my life? They're going to say yes. You're, as long as if you're not going to make any changes, we're going to take it for the rest of your life. So it's very key and important that you make notes and you get these on file before an issue happens. Because if you don't and someone that's not you comes in with your power of attorney, they're going to reject it. They're going to freeze your account and you're going to be in a mess. So I think, you know, using an example uh, would kind of help people understand a little bit. So like, for example, let's say you have... 10 properties in a portfolio, maybe your short-term rentals, something like that. And let's say you slip on a banana, you fall and you're unconscious for a couple of days, right? You need somebody to step in there and manage those assets. You need a plan, you know, in case whatever happens. And you might come back in a couple of days, but over that course of those couple of days, anything could happen, right? And you want to make sure that you have everything ready to go. So if that does happen, your assets are protected. Yeah, and the key thing with all the properties is to make sure they're properly titled. So by proper, proper titling, I mean it must be in the name of your trust because if, it were, if it's to be in your, each other's names and something happens to the both of you, that asset would then go through probate and would go through the probate process and that on average will take up a year of your time and depending on how big the asset, it could go for longer. With it being titled in the trust, it is simply a pass-through entity that you are controlling. It's represented by the man social. So that's the whole purpose. Proper titling is key when doing estate planning. Uh, so yeah. What are the most important documents for an individual or for a family to have ready to go? So most important documents would definitely be your financial and medical powers of attorney, especially if you have minors. Uh, as soon as your minor hits 18, they're legally an adult in the world's eyes and the government's eyes. You cannot make a medical or financial decision if they were to then become incapacitated. Yes, it is your kid, but in the world's eyes, they are an adult, so they can legally do stuff on their own. So it's crucial that you do these power of attorney documents for your kids when they hit ages of 18. And for our families, uh, if you have kids between 18 and 30, we do powers of attorney documents for free for them because if they have an issue, you have an issue. Okay. What's funny is I think of what you do and what I do and 
All it boils down to is helping people make these decisions, not in the sense of helping them to come to that conclusion, because that conclusion they've already come to, yes. but it's allowing them to execute on that conclusion and make sure that it goes the way that they want to, whether that's um, you know, making sure that the house that they like, they get, or making sure that the house that they got goes to the right place after they're gone. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, having the proper people for, you know, beneficiaries, where you want stuff to go is crucial for this stuff. Uh, you don't want any problems when you're gone, interfighting with family. Uh, you want everything to go smoothly, but that doesn't always happen. But you want to make it as smoothly as possible for your successors to then step in and do the estate settlement or do what needs to be done because they're already having a tough time as it is. They've lost loved ones. Um, so you want to make this, having this paperwork in place already makes it a little easier for them. Not that it's any easier to deal with the loss of a loved one, but having this paperwork in place is crucial. Yeah. No, it's really uh, preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. It is, it is. You know, and that's all you can do. So, Michael, Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions about estate planning or any of these documents we discussed, give Michael a call. And if you have any questions about this video or about real estate, buying, selling, any of it, you give me a call.